So now we are going to move to the next portion of our program and um, Judge Francis Wolfson will be giving an overview for the next section. Um, judge Wolfson is an administrative trademark judge with the Trademark Trial and Appeal Board at the USPTO. She began her career with the USPTO as a trademark examining attorney and later joined the TTAB as an interlocutory attorney. She was appointed to the position of administrative trademark judge in 2010. Prior to joining the USPTO, Ms. Wolfson worked as an attorney in private practice in San Francisco and Seattle, including at Lucasfilm LTD, where she handled the worldwide trademark portfolio for Raiders of the Lost Ark and Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. Ms. Wolfson received her undergraduate degree summa cum laude from the University of California at Santa Barbara in Asian Studies and her law degree from UCLA Law School. She spent a college year abroad to study Japanese literature at the Kansai University of Foreign Studies in Osaka, Japan. Over to you, Judge Wolfson, who is going to be giving the case summary for the opposition that you will be hearing today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mishima Buku, and I will be happy to um, begin once, let's see, the slides are online. Very good. Well, I'm going to give here a case summary, which the uh, slide will show here, of opposition number 91239006, Dong Chow versus Apple Inc. So, um, you will then be able to listen to the oral arguments on this case following the presentation. Now, the next slide will show you that Apple Inc. has um, applied to register live photos for computer software for recording and displaying images, video, and sound in International Class 9. The mark is in standard characters and is First was first used in 2015 and first used in commerce in 2015. The exclusive right to use the term photos has been disclaimed apart from the mark is shown. This application was filed based on priority derived from a Jamaican application, but the basis for the application is section 1A. The next slide will show you that in addition to um, it's other claims. Applicant claimed ownership of the mark live type, a registration that it owns for computer software. And the, and the next slide <coughs> will show you. It also claims ownership for the mark live listen, also for computer software. Turning to the following slide. Next slide, please. The applicant specimen of use that was presented in this application is is also presented on this screen and it says introducing live photos the text below says an still photo captures an instant frozen in time with live photos you can turn those instants into unforgettable living memories at the heart of a live photo is a beautiful 12 megapixel photo but together with that photo are the moments just before and after it was taken captured with movement and sound in other words, for a few seconds, the photo is animated. As applicant described in its launch, what happens a second and a half before and a second and a half after the photograph is taken is paired with the simultaneously recorded video to create a new hybrid medium. Now, as you'll see from the next slide, Poser finds several reasons to object to registration of the term live photos. First, opposer claims it owns the domain name for livephoto.com and that he plans to use the website to sell his own interactive software that brings life to still image photos. He claims the term live photos is commonly understood to refer to such goods and therefore it's generic or merely descriptive. And that opposer will be damaged by the registration of live photos because then it gives applicant the right to prevent him from using his own mark, live photo. Applicants' response to this included denial of the salient allegations in the complaint, but also, as the next slide will show you, 
raise the affirmative defense of entitlement, formerly known as standing. The entitlement to pursue a statutory cause of action is a threshold issue in every case, as you have since learned or heard before in this in today's programs. And according to applicant, a poser doesn't really have an interest in using live photos. Rather, he wants to use the mark Spin Explorer, as you can see on the screen, and Spin Fun, as you can also see on the screen, which are used in his apps that are currently available. And you'll also see from some research that applicant claimed it did. The domain livephoto.com is for sale. Now, Poser says, I'm an engineer who invented mobile applications that do the same thing as applicant. We are competitors. I continue to use livephoto.info as a domain name for a programming development website, and therefore I do have entitlement. This issue was preserved by um, applicant in its trial brief, and therefore it will go to trial. Now, the next slide, <coughs> I'm briefly going to go over the bases, which I know you are by now quite familiar with. A mark is merely descriptive if it immediately conveys knowledge of a quality feature function or characteristic of the goods or services with which it is used. And as you've heard, a descriptive mark may not be registered. However, as the next slide will show you, if a descriptive mark has acquired distinctiveness, it can be registered. To establish that the term has acquired distinctiveness, the applicant must show that in the minds of the public, the primary significance of a product feature or term is to identify the source of the product rather than the product itself. Turning to the next slide, we'll see that another ground of refusal was that the mark is generic. Genericness is the ultimate in descriptiveness, and a generic mark can never be registered. It is the common descriptive name of a class of goods or services. The test for determining whether a term is generic involves a two step inquiry. First, what is the genus of the goods or services at issue? And second, is the term understood by the relevant public primarily to refer to that genus of goods or services? Recall, applicants' goods are computer software for recording and displaying images, video, and sound. Now, we'll continue to the next slide and discuss the evidence. Evidence for a descriptive term may be obtained from any competent source. Similarly, as the following slide, the next slide will show you, generic terms may be demonstrated by evidence obtained from any competent source. And the list also includes the same types of evidence, purchaser testimony, consumer surveys, listings in dictionaries, trade journals, newspapers, and other publications. Turning to the next slide, we'll start looking at the main trial evidence. Opposers submitted first notices of reliance on dictionary definitions for live life photograph, printed internet publications, and a publication notice for a US patent application that was owned by applicant. The next slide will show you that they relied primarily on direct testimony declaration of Mr. Gao, and that pursuant to the um, rule 2.123A1 used declarations as the testimony vehicle, which is allowed. He attested to the development of technology in this field since 2015, and that he's observed many instances of generic third-party use of live photos. You'll see the next slide shows you some of those uses. Third-party use on the next slide will show you the live photos of alleged mark being used by some third parties. For example, five free apps to take live photos on Android how to get iPhones live photos on Android with Google Motion Stills. Lumia Cinemagraph lets you capture live photo from Windows Phone. Again, the following slide, the next slide will show you additional third-party uses of live photos. 
including at the bottom a, from the United States patent application publication owned by applicant, which reads in the live photo asset and burst photo asset examples, asset subcomponents typically are captured as part of a common capture transaction. Next slide, please. Here, a poser contends that applicant uses live photos itself as a generic noun, highlighting where it says capture photos that come alive and see your photos come to life. Interestingly, applicant also submitted a copy of this ad pointing out the ways that it uses live photos as a trademark. In the next slide, we'll start to look at applicant's testimony. First, applicant decided to take the cross-examination of Mr. Cow and did so by written questions because he is located in Canada outside of the United States. Therefore, during this time, proceedings were suspended. On the next slide, you'll see that applicant submitted a notice of reliance on the exhibits that were um, accompanied the cross-examination by written questions, printouts of applicant's own website and its 10K filings, printouts from third-party websites, including the Wayback Machine, copies of press releases, news articles, and other media, and excerpts from applicants, from opposers' responses to applicants' discovery requests. The next slide will show you that applicant was very conscientious about confirming and authenticating all of the articles that were attached as exhibits to its notice of reliance by direct testimony declaration of its senior paralegal at the law firm representing applicant. And the next slide will show you that they were also as diligent in showing that the Wayback Machine excerpts were also authentic. But their primary evidence, our testimony came as the next slide will show you, from the senior director of Apple Inc's legal department. And he explained, <clears throat> excuse me, applicants, how applicant uses its live photos software feature, showing that um, certain evidence show that the mark is not generic. Certain other evidence show that it's obtained or acquired distinctiveness or obtained secondary meaning. And also he spoke to the um, alleged lack of use of the phrase live photos by a poser to show that there was no entitlement. The next slide will show us some of the evidence that was submitted by applicant. This is a um, screenshots from a video that shows um, applicants YouTube video of its announcement of the live photo software. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, you may recall that all filings must be made through ESTA, the board's electronic system, and that ESTA will not accept multimedia files. So the way that these types of files are submitted is on a physical C CD or DVD, which is what applicant did here. The next slide will show us some of applicants own promotional effects. Applicant has advertising, print advertising, where they use live photos, allegedly as a trademark. And in the uh, left hand side, they showed an iPhone with arrows to some of the features of the iPhone. And what it says in the red circle, um, is that live photos brings your memories to life. The next slide shows us an additional evidence. Applicants searched about 20 reference sources, dictionaries, and thesauruses, which gave answers similar to the above. Sorry, no dictionaries indexed in the selected category contain the exact phrase live photos. However, there was an excerpt from the free dictionary, which gave a detailed account of live photos as an iPhone camera feature. And on Google, there was another link to live photos, which also calls the uh, live photos an iPhone camera feature that brings photos to life. Turning to the next slide, we'll move into the um, rebuttal evidence that a poser submitted. Here, they decided to take the cross-examination of Mr. LaPearl and were able to conduct this orally because he is resident in the United States. Opposer also submitted a notices of reliance on several different documents. One is the um, European Union Intellectual Property Office's 2018 decision regarding applicants' European Union application for live photos. Another was on 
um, copies of 10 Canadian applications that were filed by applicant uh, for live photos, one of which has been opposed by a poser, and for live photo kit, which has also been opposed by a poser, and then additional internet printouts and filed um, confidentially under seal copies of opposers three patent applications. This concluded the um, evidence and the um, trial then moves into the briefing period. So the next slide will show us briefly the arguments that were made at trial. A poser argues that applicant's computer software creates live photos, it's generic, alternatively it's merely descriptive, and prior to applicant's adoption of the term, others were using and continue to use it for the same technology. The next slide shows us applicant's arguments in its brief. Um, although this was presented last in applicant's brief, is that we said opposer standing is the threshold issue. So I'm putting it first, opposer lacks entitlement. Applicant also made evidentiary objections to opposer's rebuttal evidence, claiming that it was improper and that the foreign works of uh, trademark applications and the like, the decision uh, were irrelevant. Substantively, our applicant argues live photos is suggestive and nonetheless, it acquired distinctiveness, so it is registrable. Finally, the last slide will show us again, a poser as is a reply, gets the last word, says no, live photos is generic, live photos on the alternative is merely descriptive, consumers do not perceive it, so therefore as being a source indicating term and therefore it has no secondary meaning and as for the evidence it should not be excluded as a matter of law it should be admitted and the board can determine the weight so this wraps up the um, conclusion and we've now familiarized ourselves with the issues to be determined in this case the relevant legal principles that will guide the board's decision and the evidence upon which the arguments will be based and after this brief introduction, you may want to think about what you might focus on during the oral arguments. But thank you, and please enjoy the hearing.